Welcome into Inside the Race at Home Edition, brought to you by your local Honda dealer. And I am joined now by a very special guest, Ray's GM Eric Neander. Eric, hi. Hi, you're holding up. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever we are. Good day. Uh, we're, we're, doing, we're doing just fine here. We're doing okay. Good. I bet you're just as eager as we are to have baseball back. Yeah. yeah you, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's anything that, that we ever took for granted, but um going this long without without playing uh it's been it's been different and would love to would love to have it back in our lives here for sure well you at least got some action in the mlb draft before we get into some of your draft picks what were your overall just feelings about what you guys were able to do in the draft and the talent that you were able to acquire well i think first was with without a whole lot of spring action the prep that was required, the creativity that was required to to be as thorough as possible um, with what we had. You know, it starts with that, and that and that our staff did a wonderful job of of making the most of, of the situation. And, and through that prep, I think put us in a position to feel really good about um, the players that that we brought in. You know, we felt like we brought in some some high ceiling, uh, really talented arms, and a couple of infield prospects that that excite us and are kind of in the mold of the types of guys that we like and. Uh, Look forward to hopefully getting them all out there and playing uh, at some point in the not too distant future. All right, let's start with that top pick. The first day you take Nick Bitsko, 24th overall pick. Um, he's a high school pitcher from Pennsylvania. He's one of the youngest players in the draft. Why Nick? Well, you could keep it simple. You know, the the size, the arm strength, the the delivery, everything works the way you'd want it to work. The the amount of power um, is everything you'd want to see in a power starting pitching prospect. Um, you know, there's there's always unknowns that come with drafting any player, um, certainly with high school kids. But uh, the work done by our staff, uh, you know, really helped to illustrate and demonstrate that this is someone that's very mature, that has a really good idea of, of what they want to do. Um, and, and gave us all the confidence we could reasonably have that uh, that he's ready to go out and um, make the most of the physical abilities that we've been able to see in limited sampling. <laughs> limited sampling. That's the theme of, of this draft, right? Yeah. <laughs> Same for everybody. And uh, yeah, no, we're, we, we did, our staff did a great job of preparing us and uh, feel about as good as we could under the circumstances. And with your next pick at 37th overall, Alika Williams, we just spoke with him the other day. You went with a position player, shortstop from California. He played college baseball at Arizona State. What was attractive about this 6'2 Sun Devil prospect? Yeah, I, I think the, the the most visible standout attribute is just the defensive short. You know, it's it's as good as there was in this draft, in our opinion, and um perhaps the, the best that's been in a draft in, in some time. Uh, and, and with that, um, you know, this is someone offensively that has a really, really strong hand-eye skill, bat-to-ball skill, uh, and we have a lot of history with them, and, and we're seeing emerging strength. We're seeing physical development that, that leaves us encouraged that offensively um, there's, still, there's still a lot of room for, for growth with a nice foundation with a skill set in terms of the contact abilities and, and the way you can use the field. So um, somebody that – you know, like I said, as is the defense in short, you know, carries um, a lot of benefit to, to us and our organization just with the emerging upside offensively and the physical strength. I think that uh, there, there's more ahead of them still. And in the second round, you took a left-handed pitcher, Ian Seymour. Now, before we get to who he is as a player, was there a coincidence that you took a fellow Virginia Tech Hokie? You knew I was going to ask you that. You knew I had to. You're not the first. You won't be the last. So, <laughs> in all seriousness, um, that's that's the work done by our staff. Uh, I think, you know, he was he was placed on our board where he fit based on his abilities and and what we know about Ian. Um, you know, that, that being said, there, there is an obvious connection and um, do you have a good relationship with the staff, much like Lane and Lasseter, our, our area scout in that, you know, in that in that territory. And um, it certainly helps to, to have trusted people that are giving you information on on the people you're considering and everything with respect to Ian and how he's made up. Um, having that access, having the trust and the feedback certainly makes it a little bit easier to, to take him with where you have him on the board based on our assessments of the abilities and his own growth on the field. And in the third round, 18-year-old right-hander out of St. Joseph High School in California, Hunter Barnhart, uh, just 
a couple things I noticed when I read about him is fastball got up to 96 this year. He's a dual sport athlete in high school. He played football and baseball, but he made baseball number one. What did you guys like about him? Yeah. Um, really, really talented kid that um, had a bright future in a, in a variety of, of directions. But again, just the, the history of um, from our staff of following following him through his progression and you know we didn't get a much of a look this spring but what we saw suggested that there was you know another step that he was preparing to make in his development so um yeah no the the, the opportunity um to you know if this goes forward here to focus on baseball and um to see what he can do once he's kind of locked in on that uh, certainly exciting and the types of guys that i think over time um based on his attributes we've we've had a lot of success of developing and in the fourth round, Tanner Murray, a shortstop out of UC Davis. What's crazy about his story is that he was a walk-on at UC Davis, but not that wasn't his label for long because he quickly became crucial to their team and made an impact. Was that impressive to you guys? I mean, obviously you judge him on his talent, but the fact that he went from walk-on to what he is now. Yeah, you, you appreciate it for sure. You know, and it, it's it's not – the road for him to reach this point wasn't as smooth or as easy as it is for, you know, for some players. And there's nothing wrong with that that have the, you know, the easier path is the way it goes. But uh, that being said, it does provide some insight into how he has responded to adversity, how he's responded to unfavorable opportunities, you know, and how he's made the most of them. So it does provide some, some insight and knowledge into, you know, how he's, likely to handle the challenges that are ahead of them going into into pro ball um, but certainly it, it it's led by the talent and what we see and um, I guess more than more than anything else I think it helps to highlight and there's examples of this throughout our organization that it's not so much where you come from or your history it's just about where you are today and um, that's that's what we keep our focus on. And finally, I think a pick that made a lot of people pretty happy around the Tampa area is Jeff Hankinson, the fifth round pick. Um, hometown kid. He is from Tampa. He went to Jesuit High School and UCF. How, I mean, I know obviously, like we said, you pick based off talent, but it's got to be a little bit satisfying to get a little hometown flavor in there. Yeah, it's, it's fun. We, we found our way to some connections in this draft that it really wasn't by design. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, just, just kind of the way it went, but it is, it, it, it's, it's nice when, when those things come together and, and it certainly adds a little bit to the the story and, and the intrigue as, as we follow these players and, and their growth and certainly is, is special for, um, you know, in a situation like this as well. How effective did you guys feel that he was when you looked at him as a reliever at UCF? Yeah. Um, well, you know, obviously not a lot of, footage this this spring but we were able to get in there and um catch a little bit we do have you know what we have on video and um he's he's been pretty good for a few years now so another one where just a, a positive trend line that we've seen through through college you know through his progression from high school to college each year just getting better and better and better um and really just continue to demonstrate a nose for the strikeout and um the, the fastball and what he can do with it i think that's going to translate really well and uh, is a nice match for our player development group. Certainly an unprecedented type of draft for you guys. A lot of uh, lack of footage, I guess, but it seems like you guys have a great draft class in 2020. Eric, thanks for joining us on Inside the Rays, brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Right. Hopefully I see you in person sometime soon, right? What's that? I said hopefully we see each other in person sometime yeah, soon. Yeah, that we'll that we are back yeah, yeah, for, for many reasons. That'd be, that'd be great. So thanks very much for having us and for having me on here. And um, look forward to, to getting back on the field soon enough. Awesome. Thanks so much, Eric. Thanks, Trisha.